Oh, you thought that this was another boring educational video about a Mark 12? Well, you were miserably wrong and you better get the hell out of here because this is actually a love story. So when I said that this wasn't an educational video, I kind of fibbed, sorry guys. But just look at it as more as, uh, say, how do you say, uh, gun erotica. I was gonna upload this video to Pornhub, that's how, that's how great of a love story this is, but I decided against it. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mark 12 Mod 1, probably one of my favorite rifles out there in my collection. Um, Absolutely love this thing, so definitely stay for the whole video because we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of this thing. And you know what I'm going to say. If you haven't hit that, that subscribe button, definitely give her a sniff. If you haven't, touch that like button. Give her a little lick. Rub those dick beaters right across that keyboard and leave a comment. Really helps me out, really helps out the production, really helps out everybody. And before we start, I got to thank Pro Armory so, so much. These guys are absolutely great. They are the sponsor of the channel. They give us all the ammo to make good videos and things like that. They are locally owned. They are veteran operated. They have the best prices around and the fastest shipping. And they are really, really good guys. Couldn't do it without them. And every single time you don't check out Pro Armory in the link below, Joe Biden sniffs another child. Yeah, so it's up to you. Go check out Pro Armory in the link below or Joe Biden's gonna sniff another child. So it's up to you guys. Your call, but uh, let's just get right on into the meat and potatoes of this video, yeah? The Mark 12 Mod 1 Sexually Personalized Rifle. I mean, special purpose rifle. So how this uh, rifle actually was originated, it was created by the Navy. Uh, SOCOM was looking for a rifle with a little more of a designated marksman purpose. So originally it was the SPR Special Purpose Receiver, because in the beginning, it was just coming with a upper receiver and they were throwing them onto their um, M4s, M16s, or whatever it may be. And then when they started releasing a whole rifle, that is when it moved over to the SPR Special Purpose Rifle. Um, so just a little history about it. It was intended for Navy SOCOM and then it later went out to a bunch of different branches and uh, very, 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 very tried and true rifle. Um, never heard anything bad about this from people that used it downrange, and I totally believe it. I think it's a, I think it's a great rifle, and it's definitely one of my favorites. But you know how we do things here at Midnight Run. We go nut to butt. So starting out with the muzzle brake and the muzzle device. Um, it's set up for the AEM5. This is the Allen Engineering um, suppressor. Really, really, really good suppressor. Probably, I would probably have to say the quietest suppressor I've, I've ever shot. Um, I absolutely love this thing. Uh, it, it's extremely old design. This thing, uh, this thing is probably almost double my age, but it is extremely effective and it's extremely quiet. So I really don't have anything bad to say about the AEM5, and I think that if you are going to get a Mark 12, you're gonna or you're gonna build a Mark 12. You definitely, definitely need a suppressor on it, and I would ch definitely check out the AM5. Um, great suppressor. 
nothing bad to say about it other than it is kind of gassy. Um, but you can get rid of that with maybe an adjustable, adjustable gas block or a um, gas buster charging handle. Doesn't really bother me. I don't really care. Can't change it, so I don't. Really, it doesn't really bother me. So, but those are things that you can do to um, help help that gas flow back. But the the device for the AM5 is pretty interesting. Um, there's a lot going on here. So you have the you have the actual muzzle device with the threads on it. You do need to time that because it needs to go in the nine o'clock and the three o'clock direction. But then it has this little collar down here. So what that collar does is the camera's probably probably not gonna uh, zoom in on it, but the inside of the AM5 is kind of chamfered. So when you put it on said rifle and you screw it on, extremely old design, <laughs> no quick release or anything like that. Uh, very, very simple, very, very easy to use. That chamfer lines up with that collar and it it aligns it perfectly. So that creates, uh, or that helps with bullet shift. Um, so I don't notice any sort of bullet shift when it's w without the suppressor and with the suppressor on. So that is pretty cool. And they say that that is because of that collar. That collar completely aligns it perfectly every single time with the AM5. Um, you know, when you go into those, uh, those uh, ratcheting ones and all that other crazy stuff, carbon buildup gets in there. So every time you take it off, put it back on, it's not set the same exact way than say you zeroed it. So that's when you're going to see that bullet shift. But that collar and that thread, um, it, 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 gets rid of that. it gets rid of that. So that's why I always really, really liked just a threaded on um, suppressor. So that is the AM5. Definitely check it out. Um, I think it is by far one of the quietest suppressors um, I've ever shot, um, and I got, got nothing bad to say about it. Going into the barrel, the barrel is the meat and potatoes of any rifle. Um, this one is made by Douglas. It's a one in seven twist. It's a stainless steel heavy barrel, and it is free floating. Um, when you're looking at more, well, this is just my personal preference. When I'm looking at more of a DMR style rifle, an SBR style rifle, um, I would probably like maybe that chrome line barrel, something a little more accurate. But um, these things are on the M4 uh, lowers, so they're putting a lot of rounds through them. They are extremely tough, and it is, it is still extremely accurate. Um, I get this thing out to probably, on average, 700 yards, give or take, um, 600 yards, it just laughs at. And then I start kind of seeing a, uh, a big bullet drop and start have to make a lot of corrections past 600 yards. Um, if you use the 77 grain bullets, um, it definitely will get more velocity and you'll get more range out of it. But I think I'm, I was just using the, the green tip ammo, which isn't ideal. Um, there definitely is better ammo out there for the Mark 12 if you want the uh, max effective range out of it. But still an extremely accurate rifle, um, and I have really no complaints about, about the barrel at all. I wish it was chrome-lined, but is what it is. It's not, you can throw, if you're gonna make a build, if you're gonna build one, you can definitely throw one on um, your, your, your rifle. I do like a little more accurate rifle, especially if, it, if you're using it for, uh, say, a DMR purpose. The gas block, the gas block is not adjustable. Um, again, I think you can, if you wanted to uh, put an adjustable gas block on it, um, it would help with the gas blowback, but mine is not. Um, that one's also made by Badger. Um, it is just a normal direct impingement system, and it's pretty primitive, nothing really to it. Uh, and yeah, so uh, maybe throw on a uh, adjustable gas block if you wanna alleviate some of that gas, but it doesn't really bother me. It's not overwhelming, so I'm completely fine with the Badger gas block, the Mark 12 one, and uh, really no complaints about that either. Going into the rail, this rail is made by Knight's Armament. Um, it is a quad rail, so it has the uh, Picatinny on the six o'clock, the 12 o'clock, the three o'clock, and the nine o'clock, which is cool. Um, very primitive still. I know a lot of people are running M-locks and stuff like that. Myself, I am also transitioning over to the M-lock rails, but um, for this one, uh, it's not gonna fail you. Um, nothing's gonna come loose or anything like that. And um, I have nothing really bad to say about the, the quad rail. I still use them and I still enjoy them. Um, especially on a rifle like this where you got a lot of stuff going on. You know, you got your bipod, I got my foregrip on here and whatnot. Um, 
I, I, I have nothing bad to say about the quad rail. But the Knight's Armament rail, I do kind of have a bad gripe about it. It has this locking ring right here. Um, and I really have, I've noticed numerous times that it creeps off. So I have to tighten it down a lot, which kind of sucks. Um, I go out to the range and I just feel the rail, I feel my rail kind of shifting. I'm like, damn it. I'm like, I gotta go back and then you gotta tighten it and you gotta get the tools and stuff. So I wish that maybe this rail was more of like a Daniel defense rail where it was bolted on. Um, that's other than that, it's not bad. Um, Knight's Armament makes pretty good stuff, but uh, for the price of this rail and everything, I wish that it was more bolted on instead of that locking ring. I'm using the hand guards on it, kind of gay, but it does, it does feel a lot better. Um, I don't know why I have them on there, especially when I have the Knight's Armament foregrip on, but whatever, they've been on there since I bought the thing, and I'll probably just keep them on there. Um, I am running the foregrip. Uh, I don't really know why. I've had it on for a while. Um, it does it does feel a little better when you're um, like running and gunning and stuff like that, but I, I might try taking it off and see how that um, how it feels with it off. But I've always ran it with it on and I don't know, it's just kinda kinda just been there and it's just kinda stayed there. So um, I will take it off eventually and I'll try it. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't like it with, with it off and it is what it is. That's, so, that's what's the best part about rifles. You can customize them to the way you want and you can do as you wish with it and as you feel fit with it to make you uh, feel better and make a better shooting experience. Um, if you're going to get a Mark 12, especially if you have an SPR style rifle, DMR style Ooh, rifle, I definitely recommend a sling. I do not have a sling on this rifle. Uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, I'm definitely going to get a sling on this. I just, it just hasn't, hasn't came. Uh, I, I, I've had a lot of other builds and stuff, so I have, I've put a money into other things. I do have to get a sling for it, and it's definitely on the list to do. Going into the scope, don't laugh at me. I know everybody's going to tear me up. This is the Vortex Diamondback. This is a 15 power scope. And to tell you the truth, I don't. It, it, it's perfect for me. I don't have any problems. I don't have any gripes about the, 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 the Diamondback. So I know everybody's gonna, is gonna tear me apart in the comment section, but it's not a bad scope. Um, yeah, you, you know, I, I'm looking at, you know, some night forces or, or something like that. But um, with a rifle like this, especially with the 18 inch barrel, I recommend kind of a little higher power, higher power scope. Um, I've seen people run like 10 powers and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I like a little higher power, not this massive 35 night force one, but um, I do like around the 15 power. Um, I'd rather see farther i'd rather have a I, i'd rather be able to see farther farther than not so it's definitely a uh i i definitely recommend probably run a 15 power if you're gonna put a scope on a uh, mark 12 or something like that or an spr rifle that you're building um it is in the geisley super precision mount i love the mounts um i have the geisley super precision on a lot of my other rifles uh, probably one of my favorite mounts. A little pricey, but um, the, the money is definitely, definitely worth it. Upper receiver and lower receiver, they're just Colt. Um, nothing crazy. The bolt is a Colt as well. And then I just have a standard charging handle on it. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, I do have the Geisley SSA E trigger in it, which I do highly recommend you put a, a better trigger in it than that just normal AR-15 mil spec trigger. Um, I really, really like the Geisley SSA E trigger. Super smooth, two-stage trigger, um, really crisp pull. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. And um, it, it, especially in a precision rifle like this one, you want a really, really smooth trigger that you can tickle. So um, probably check out you know the Geisleys. I know that the contract, I'm pretty sure that the Mark 12s were using um, Knight's Armament triggers. I didn't put one in. I like Geisley a lot better. Um, I think that Geisley triggers are far superior than any other trigger manufacturer, but that's just me. So I have the SAA, Geisley SSAE in it, and I absolutely love it. Um, the only thing that I don't really like about, I would like to make it ambidextrous, but that is uh, in the future. Um, running the rubberized grip on it, uh, so when you know, when you're sucking on your fingers and you're crying and stuff because you're in pain, uh, you, your hand, good grip on it. Um, I put that on all of my rifles. I like that rubberized, texturized grip. So um, maybe look at that. Feels a lot better in your hand than the uh, just your standard uh, hard plastic one. So 
Running the LMT, just an adjustable stock on it for the length of pole. Uh, I had a fixed stock on it for a while. It wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, but I do like that adjustable length of pole. So that's why I chose the, the, uh, the LMT. Just feels really, really good. I wish it had like a cheek rise on there or something. I know you can make one and get ghetto with it, but I haven't done that. I haven't really had a big problem with it and I, I, I enjoy it. I'll probably keep that stock on there for a while, so. That's a wrap, guys. That is my setup for the Mark 12. Um, absolutely love this rifle. It fills so many purposes and so many roles. Um, I think that it is, it, it's probably one of my favorite go-to rifles out there. I know I compared it in a previous video to a, the MR762 and talking about the 5.56 and the 7.62, but if I had to pick one rifle, uh, I would probably get this Mark 12. So this is my build, nothing fancy. I'm not the guy with you know the lasers and the magnifiers and the flux capacitor and the dingleberries hanging off of it. It's pretty bones dry, nothing crazy. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm a pretty primitive guy, so I don't really care about all that ostentatious stuff. So this is it. This is it, this is my build. Has a lot of history. Uh, really, really great rifle. Has been tried and true through numerous wars. And this thing has killed a lot of bad guys. And everybody that I know that has used the Mark 12 or built a Mark 12 absolutely loves it. I've never, I, I, I never hear anything bad about the Mark 12, so. Um, it's really, really fun. This thing's like a Lego. You can just kit it out to whatever you want. Different rails, different this, different that. That's why the AR-15 style rifle is so great because it has so many different options that you can do. So that's a wrap, guys. Thank you again for joining me. Wanted to make another video on the Mark 12. It's probably my favorite rifle. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Definitely go check out Pro Armory. And I will see you guys back out there. Just a quick PSA, guys. This world is getting extremely crazy and I can't bite my tongue anymore. They're going after the gun rights. There's balloons flying over from, from China. What is going on? Um, I tried to make sense of all this stuff. I tried to make sense of all these gun laws and this and that and yada, yada, yada. I can't do it. I don't have, my, my brain just doesn't work. I, I, I can't have... I can't have, I don't have any, I don't have anything to say. I'm just, look, I'm babbling right now because I don't know what to say. Um, they're coming after, other than this, this is, this is all I have to say, is nobody's coming to save you. It is all up to you to protect yourself and your family. Um, the government, they want to strip you of your rights. And once your rights are taken, especially the second amendment, you are absolutely fucked. Uh, there's no easier way to say it. So do you want to be a liability or do you want to be able to protect yourself and your family and your property and your way of life? Your call, shit's getting really fucking weird out there and I can't bite my tongue anymore. Um, their kids are shitting in litter boxes and, and, and men can get pregnant now. We don't even know what's going on. So definitely get out there and buy uh, buy a Mark 12, buy a rifle, buy an AR, buy some handguns, get the guns, get the ammo from Pro Armory, and get your, uh, get some training in there because this shit is getting out of hand. It's getting extremely scary. That's all I gotta say. Take care of yourselves. God bless America. And I love all of you. I wouldn't say all of you. Some of, some of the comments are pretty, pretty shitty. But I'll see you guys back out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and later.